Uh, hopefully you can see my screen. Yes, we do. Yeah, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Um, in which case, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, this is the Qubit community meeting. Um, I will post the agenda in the chat. And if you can please add your uh, name to the attendees list. Chat. Um, pardon me, I've never had to do this before. So, uh, this is going to be a little, little shaky. There we go. All right. Um, do we have anyone new on the call that would like to, that this is their first um, Qbert community meeting and they would like to introduce themselves with a few short words? I, um, I'm Ale, um, I'll be working with uh, Qbert um, for some time now. Um, I, I've been attending these calls silently just to listen in, uh, but yeah, from now on, I'll be a little more active. So just wanted to say hi. hi. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, I will just pop your name in here. Michelle is in there. Um, all right. Is, is there anyone else here that's new today before I move on to the agenda? Going once. All right. Um, I've got a couple of really quick things. One is that uh, everyone who's attended any meeting through the month of June will know that we've been uh, attempting to get rid of the duplicate um, Qbert calendar entries. Um, they should now all have been removed. Uh, please let me know if you see a duplicate Qbert community meeting entry. Um, that is all. Uh, another thing, and I realize as I'm typing this up that I should send this out as an email, so I will and give the duplication, but in short, um, a few of us met with the CMCF technical documentation or technical writing uh, special interest group um, who have a monthly um, meeting to help out whoever turns up uh, answer the technical writing questions. And we talked about um, lastly restructuring um, or potentially restructuring our user guide uh, to help it sort the information, help findability, that kind of thing. And also one of the key things that came out was um, uh, identifying and producing some uh, stronger quick start material. Um, we were fortunate enough to have a, a new user who just gone through the experience of, of trying to get involved in Qbert and using the user guide and having a lot of struggles with that. And so we were able to have a good chat with him and the, and the technical writing team. Um, and so they, they kind of generally um, recommend that Quick start material is the best thing to focus on to start with. Um, and so that's something I've created an issue that I think I posted in the agenda um, to tackle some of this. Um, and in doing so, I discovered that the, and someone had raised an issue the same day that the Catacoda um, website is no longer public. We have some Qbert labs that were in Catacoda that are no longer accessible, which means. You go to a website, you click on one of the try buttons and it goes down. Um, it, if anyone's here that's familiar with uh, our, our website, um, if you could please take a look at that. Um, my recommendation would be um, maybe uh, we still need to um, uh, look into potentially migrating to um, an alternative such as Killer Coda was suggested in the user uh, Catacoda uh, repo issue, um, or if you want to do something else. So maybe not totally remove it, but if we could take it off the website, that would, I guess, prevent people from, from going to a, a dead link. Um, yeah, happy to expand on any of that uh, if anyone wants, but uh, also happy to move on to the next point. Okay, well, I, I can take on the responsibility of trying to clean up the Catacoda stuff. This, this is Chandler, by the way. Oh, hey. Uh, so I, I'd most recently kind of taken over ownership of the Catacoda scenarios. And uh, if it's an easy one-to-one -one transition to Killer Coda, then maybe we can skip the step of removing it from the website. But I think to, you know, if it takes more than a week, then it probably should be off the website in the meantime. Right on. The, um, the, 
the person that raised the issue that I've got here, issue 34, um, uh, was kind enough to link to a like how to migrate. And it, it seems to be just relatively simple, just a couple of steps. Um, right, I'll, I'll go check that out next. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Right, in which case, uh, Ale, you've got something in the agenda. Would you like to please uh, jump into that? Sure. So um, I was running into a bug. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure if this is a bug, but I was running into a scenario where um, if I if I try to create a VMI with bad spec dot affinity YAML through kubectl, uh, it complains about not being a valid YAML. But if it happens through Ansible Kate's module, uh, then it does not complain. It just allows it to get through. I learned that Ansible Kates module don't do client side validation. That is the open API uh, CRD spec validation on the client side. Uh, so because this, and, and I found out that it was not uh, implemented on the server side. So I was just wondering if uh, this is uh, a bug or this is intentional. Um, I was wondering if I can create an issue to, uh, you know, try and fix this, but wanted to get the community's opinion on this. I would be curious whether that's a, like a bigger problem within the, you know, the Ansible Kate's kind of modules, or if, you know, other um i guess mutating webhooks you know handle that differently so i know that deployment uh does not go through with the same spec dot template dot affinity value uh and in fact when i did uh cube uh create minus minus raw uh, that is it does a explicit post request against the api server uh it did not fail the validation. So it allowed, because it was not going through the client side validation, uh, it went, mm -hmm. right? So um, I am unsure if this is a Ansible Kates thing. I think by design, Ansible Kates uh, skips client side validation because they don't want to import all the Python uh, client, uh, data structures and maintain it over time. So they are using dynamic client, which skips over the client side validation. Okay, that makes sense. And it, so it sounds more like uh, ans the Ansible philosophy in general is you should bet your YAML some other way before you go into Ansible. <laughs> yes, and I, I tried to, I mean, I tried to look around to see if there are any other validating modules, but I couldn't find one. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I, the only way I have to fix this by Ansible is to create a cube cuddle, is to add like a cube cuddle create minus F dry run uh, a task before that. If it fails, then don't create the thing, but but that sounds very hacky. So I, I have not suggested that. Um, so what would be the path forward from here on? Should I create an issue and try to follow up with some kind of server side proposal, server side validation proposal for this. Um, I have walked through the deployment validator um, and uh, potentially Kubebird VMI validator can also use a similar, uh, similar uh, functionality. Well, I'll just say that's not my area of expertise, so I was going to duck out. <laughs> okay. Um, creating an issue as a, a, a starting point for creating a large proposal or um, a PR, I think, is the right way to go. And then 
people can put their thoughts on before getting into any deeper work as to you know whether it's a good starting point. That's my understanding anyway. Okay, sounds good. I'll follow up with those suggestions. Thanks. Thank you. Um, unless anyone has anything else to add, we'll go to um, Andre's point about GPU live migration. Thank you, Andre. Yes. Uh, since the NVIDIA already released them kernel drivers, uh, we are already investigating how to develop the code uh, on top of Kubevert to do GPU live migration. Uh, any help is welcome. <laughs> we are in the investigation phase right now. I already talked with Ryan from NVIDIA that is part of this uh, uh, community here. And he say NVIDIA is doing nothing at all today <laughs> to do that. Uh, give me some ideas, but uh, any uh, ideas are very welcome. Now we are uh, investigating how to do that in a proper way. Okay. Uh, do you have any, any information how you actually perform the live migration using standard libbeard? Uh, because on our case, all the servers has the same hardware, like four NICs, four GPUs each. Uh, and then we plan to migrate the users uh, and attach to uh, when we migrate to the other pod. The same way you, when you have different MAC address, you do something uh, regarding reattach the, the network. You, we need to, we would like to reattach the GPUs the same way uh, you do uh, on, on network cards. Okay. Yeah, that sounds reasonable, uh, but how the virtual machine can live without the GPU actually? Uh, this is something that we are discussing with uh, 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 Ryan from, from NVIDIA. He say this is uh, the, the way that Hyper-V uh, and VMware does that is something like uh, hibernate the VM until he, he, he this is reattached, something like that. Okay. So this is more likely um, not online, not live migration, but like offline migration. Yeah. So you need to hi yes. hibernate it, then migrate. Yeah. I'm not sure if Kubevert is supporting it right now. Yes. Am I right? That's why we are looking for <laughs> some directions. And since I'm talking to the uh, on the open floor also uh, about, can I talk about that? Uh, we are trying to install Windows 11 on top of, of Kubevert and it requires TPM version two. Uh, I know that KVM is capable to do TPM, but uh, I didn't find any uh, instructions how to do that. Any ideas from the community? How uh, anyone uh, already tried to install Windows 11 on Kubevert? I put already on the community something about that and nobody answers. Andre, no I'm sorry, else. could you repeat the question? Anyone uh, has tried to install Windows 11 uh, on top of Kubevert because it requires TPM version two and uh, Secure Boot is already there, enable. But then uh, so far, so on, I was not able to, to, to make it happen uh, over <laughs> make, make what happen, the installation of Windows or the use of Secure Boot? Of Windows 11 because it requires TPM version two. We, we do support TPM version two for this exact purpose. And it is in the latest Kubevert, um, at least like versions beyond release 53. So the main mm. branch does have it. 
do you know specifically why it's not working? Do you have an error in, that you're seeing? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm using for 53 for sure, 53.1, I think. Uh, and uh, 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 when I enable the TPM, uh, something is wrong. Perhaps you can give me uh, the, the, the YAML to, to, to make it happen. I'm very interested to see what's not working for you because um, our, our default templates should make that work out of the box. No. Uh, so if you're running into issues, we, we would be very interested in finding out more about that. Yeah, uh, how to proceed because I open on, on the community dev uh, on NV, uh, on, on Kubevert and nobody answers yet about that. Okay, well, uh, we'll follow up. Uh, sorry, I had missed that uh, discussion. So we'll go check okay. and make sure you're getting the help you need. Wonderful, because we are almost there, but Windows 11 is not a, a, a easy animal. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Hey, Andre, I, I joined like only a few minutes ago. Uh, this is Ryan. Uh, Hi, Ryan. Have, hey, how you doing? I, I wanted, did you have something? Did you have a question for me or something? I didn't. Uh, I, I think I've so, missed. Uh, I talked to you, uh, and uh, we we talk about a GPU live migration, and we were thinking uh, to start to develop it, since Nvidia is not doing that. And I I open the floor here to uh, have anyone given an idea how to to make it happen behind the scenes, uh, because now we are investigating only. Uh, how to do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think like, um, like what I was saying to you is that for at least for where, where I'm at right now, it's like, I think um, it's that uh, I wouldn't say that's it. Not that so we're not interested. It's more like um, we have a bunch of things that like we have sort of in yes. our, in our <laughs> focus right now. And it's like, this is something that I, I think is very interesting. And like, and, and even previously I've spoken about like, um, one other topic that's interesting to us that's sort of in this area, like which is like offline virtual machine migration with pass through mm -hmm. GPUs, which is something that was something that um, we've taken some interest in. We've worked on a little bit in the community and had some discussions. And there's, there's already been some design around this, like Mike Hendrickson and, and, and a few folks have done some work around um, doing save and restore. And that's something like that was um, that's along the, these lines. Um, but it's it's mostly with pass through that you know that we were looking at to to do this with. So, but I, I mean, I think like there's I guess the point is like um, I, I think it would be good to have a discussion on this. Um, I just need to um, get um, I just need to find some time to like prioritize some of this stuff. I mean, I think it's valuable. Um, so, I, did you did you start a? Um, I think you started something on the mailing list. I, I can maybe follow up with you there on. Uh, just what my thoughts are and kind of what we can, how we can progress this. this yes, any help is very welcome because now we are realizing how to do it. Perhaps your experience behind the scenes from NVIDIA, knowing how VMware and uh, Hyper-V have done that so far, uh, we perhaps can mimic here uh, on Convert. Sure, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up with you on the mailing list. Um, We'll start a discussion there. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, Andre. Uh, looking at the mailing list, I'm I'm not seeing anything, any queries from you regarding Windows 11 on there. I'm only seeing four different uh, emails. One titled "Press any key to boot from CD, Kubernetes GPU, RAM disk, D duplication." Yeah. I'm missing one. Let me see if it's on this on the Kubevert mailing list or. I put on KVM mailing list. I don't remember exactly. Uh, if I don't put here, I, I'm gonna open a new one right now, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All righty. Um, so, so I think that um, there's the TPM 2.0 as well, uh, which takes us down to the um, ad proposal, live vibration to bridge 
for their work. Actually, I was telling about this feature before. Uh, now I just prepared the proposal and I want to take your attention to look into it. If anybody interested in live migration uh, for the Bridget pod network, please take a look. I saw that already and it's looking very promises. If, he, I, if I, we can help any, any shape or form, please say to us, okay? The only problem I uh, faced is the um, uh, integration test, uh, which is running. Um, it's like operator test for updating kubevirt, if I understood it. If I understood it well, and right now there are no special condition for uh, non-migratable virtual machines. I'm trying to use uh, CD-ROM, the virtual machine with the read-only CD-ROM, which is shouldn't be able to live migrate, but this test is not working to me. I don't know if you have any ideas, please comment it into implementation pull request. Yes. Uh, open a ticket also on, on the discussion forum we have. And yeah, I'm we going to do that. We, we reply on that because it's more live <laughs> there. Okay. Thank you. I'm done. Short and sweet. Uh, Gan. Got to uh, open for about separate Kubert Kubert storage. Yeah. Hi. Um, so there is this initiative of separating the storage code to storage package, similar to what the network team did with the network package. Um, so Alicia and I were talking about it, how how we can do it, what should be done, what functionalities should be moved. Um, like what will be the best way to, to review the storage um, code? Because it's pretty much everywhere from controllers to um, client commands to um, build launcher. Uh, the hot plug is all over the place. Um, so like I started with moving the snapshot and restore and some utils for pvcs and data volumes in the pr i attached here but we were wondering if you have any opinions about the best way to do it uh what should be moved what shouldn't be moved stuff like that well, one question for you so are you um so you're trying to move all the storage code out of the kubert kubert repo is that what you're trying to do no, not out, just to create a like package storage and under it all the storage code. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> I it, it, yeah, I'd have to okay. I don't I'm I'm not really an expert on this. I mean I this I don't know if Mike's around, but um it would be good to talk to Mike Hendrickson, see maybe he's got an opinion on this or Alexander maybe. Yeah, I'm from the storage team, so I know I know this stuff. Just um, mm, like I'm not sure regarding like um, the whole vert launcher stuff. Stuff I think Alice and I have agreed that for for that, like for example, that should remain where it is. Um, but like all, all the different disks, are they considered storage or not? Because I'm, I'm not sure if they're, um, like they're not code that our storage team wrote exclusively, for example, or... So just to um, generalize a bit more the, the question, um, what could make the life easier for the community. Um, I don't know. It happens that there are some storage related bugs and maybe um, it would be easier if we can group, I don't know, even feature uh, under the same package to be able to identify um, better the reviewers. I, I don't know, maybe if something is changed under that package, uh, Maybe just ping people like Shelly, for example. 
Um, do we have Edward here? Or I think he did something similar for network. Or I'm not sure which who create the uh, package network. I guess. Yes, uh, that will be Edward, but I don't see him here. Yeah. I mean, it's a code refactoring, so I think it was very easy to define exactly, but our goal would be, I don't know, try to group storage functionality, and uh, but we also need to define exactly what are those. Yeah, uh, I can understand what you mean about taking responsibility for uh, more than uh, storage uh, than you have before, like, for example, the container disk, where you should put it up the storage, uh, more like, uh, Primitive storage features, right? Mm -hmm. If we should put it on the storage, uh, I don't have a solid uh, um, opinion about wh whether it will be more like more easier for me if this will be grouped under storage or not. But I can see one clear advantage is that we can uh, reduce the boilerplate of the CI jobs. If, for example, everything will be consolidated under one place in storage. Then we can do the run if changed, and then the lane will need to be run like for every, each and every change. So, I plus one for consolidating it, but uh, what exactly should be consolidated there? Uh, not sure. Yeah, I I don't know, but I suspect that um, some of the more opinionated people on this subject are not on this call at the moment. Um, is this worthwhile putting to the Kubert dev mailing list to try to elicit opinions there? Yeah, I talked uh, with Michael personally. He is not so uh, strong about this initiative. It's something that uh, Dan Cannon's work is really into. Uh, so we're trying to look if it's something that we really want to do or what's the opinion of the larger group. I mean, the other alternative would be uh, that, that uh, to do what Shelly already did in the PR and then maybe for a future future, then we can try to to put it there. Uh, because I think one one of the other part that Qbert does that could be considered storage are all the uh, disk type, uh, but again, not sure if moving those in the subdirectory is really out. And I'm talking about uh, container disk, ephemeral disk, uh, host disk, uh, and all the disk uh, something. I think it seems nobody has an opinion on this, so maybe we should, I don't know, maybe we should just leave it there and just go ahead with the first PR, I don't know. Maybe let's have more technical uh, discussion we'll schedule, to schedule it. To see what uh, make, what really makes sense to move the, like yeah. you said, if it makes sense to move the container, this cause this. One thing we could do as well is um, uh, we could set aside some time specifically in, our, in next week's community meeting and if we send an email out now to the people that um, have opinions or this may impact in the broader community can then attend that meeting um, you know, with advance notice. Just an idea. Yeah, sounds good. Alrighty. Um, if if that sounds all right, I'll move on to the next point. Um, hi, uh, this is Alay again. Um, I am trying to get started um, to run make commands like make cluster up and make cluster sync uh, with uh, doc D I N D. Um, but I'm using a Podman environment in in OS X. Um, 
I was wondering if anyone has um, anyone here has got that working. Um, I'm gone. I I hit a couple snags and then after that, um, uh, I'm hitting an uh, exec error for uh, the Arch sixty four environment. So um, I I just I'm curious if uh, this is something folks run or um, Linux is the preferred environment. To be honest, I was trying to run uh, this make command on my OS X with the Docker on for desktop and M1 processor, and it wasn't working to me. I'm not sure yeah. if Podman will work as well. <laughs> okay, uh, that is um, helpful data point. Thank you. Yeah, I, I guess I'll try the next then. Thanks. All right. Um, that brings us to the end of uh, the agenda right for floor parts. Uh, we'll do a quick bug scrub. Uh, I'll also apologize. I'm not used to sharing my screen. So sorry for kind of like randomly going off and, and looking for stuff in Slack and et cetera. Um, all right, uh, everything here up until Oops. tag. Did I see Vladik on the call before? Not here now. Um, GitLab migration feature gate. Uh, everyone, let's have a look at that. That's, uh, wow, we have a lot of here. Interesting. Oh, this is right here. Uh, Skew, it looks like you're a reviewer of Pistol on the Call. Uh, it's a draft. That probably means we can avoid it. Sorry, not avoid. Um, ignore it for now. <laughs> it's no longer a draft. Um, and then also draft. And that takes us into next week. Um, one thing that occurred to me with this kind of uh, thing, would it be helpful for future community meetings if um, before the meeting, um, Kat or myself went through these pull requests and, and lined them up here like a couple of hours beforehand rather than doing this in the meeting? Or is there a benefit to doing this live? Open question. Yeah, I think it's better to prepare it before uh, ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Andre, back to your Windows 11 install question. You know, I see the email now. Thank you for sending that. Um, now that I see what you're asking, are you asking how to enable the TPM? Because we do have that. Uh, I enable on my YAML, and I'm still getting this error. Uh, is that something like example for I follow? Sure, we can dig one out for you. We've we've definitely have this working in various forms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any help is very welcome. But looks like everything else has replies. Um, yeah, a lot of moving on threads this week, I've noticed. Which is nice to see. Uh, and a quick bug scrub. Okay, this is basically what we've got. So far, 
written by Ryan. Panel VMI cleanup in the load generator tool. Um, rather than trying to address these because I don't really know much about anything, I'll just kind of like bring them up here, read out the heading, and then if someone, if that kind of like um, interests anyone, um, by all means, um, can continue reading it or answer and respond. Um, hopefully that's okay. So I've got something on it about VMI cleanup in the load generator tool. Uh, hey Andrew, I'm sorry, I missed the discussion around last is issue. Do you mind um, repeating? Uh, sorry, mate. Which um... the uh, handle VMI cleanup? Oh right, I sorry, I kind of glossed over it because it was in draft, and so I thought. Oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, I'm working on um, trying to uh, test that draft PR, uh, and that's where I'm hitting issues with trying to make, uh, trying to get the make commands working. So once I have that working, I will convert that into a PR. Thank you. That sounds great. I totally lost it. Um, yeah, and I hope that's okay. If something in the draft, um, I presume that means that we don't need to necessarily focus on. All right, so the bug. So that's nothing. And now we'll see Qubit metric information in Prometheus. Um, if that speaks to anyone, um, it's here. It is 8044 in Qubit. I'll just please take a look. And Another issue about Qubit snapshot restore. It's possibly created again. Yeah, so it's configuration. All right. If anyone can help out this user, uh, here it is. It's at 046. That basically brings us to the end. Um, is there. It, Anything else that anyone would like to, to bring up or, or return to in the, um, the bug scrub mailing list review or pull request? Any discussion that um, we could dig deeper into rather than ending the meeting now? Um, please follow. All righty. Um, in which case, I'll give you back uh, 18 minutes of your life back. Um, one final thing before we go, um, I am trying to put together some stuff for KubeCon North America. So if there is anyone on the call that is um, highly likely to attend, please let me know. Um, it would be very helpful to help coordinate. Um, apart from that, hope everyone has a lovely day and we'll see you all when, when is it? Oh. Uh, when is it? it? It is in Detroit and it is in, um, top of my head, um, it is it's the end of October. I think it's, I should know this. I think it's the 22nd to the 27th of October. I'll very quickly jump ahead on my calendar. The 24th to the 28th, close, in Detroit. Uh, we would like to be there. Oh, cool. Uh, for you understand, uh, I think we are one of the largest implementation of Kubevert. More than right. 100 cluster with uh, 1,250 nodes per cluster. For you understand, that does and sound. This is already a case, <laughs> and we are also doing with GPU on top of GCP. For you understand. Okay. We are in all regions of GCP, for you understand. We are releasing our service in 180 countries in 60 languages. And this no. is completely based on Kubevert. Right on. Sorry, um, who are you representing, sorry? Ddesk. Ddesk, right, okay. Ddesk.global. Fantastic. Um, and that's that's yourself and others, or uh, you'll be uh, yeah, I, I'm the main, the owner of the company and everything. 
All right on. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Well, I'll um, I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep in the loop uh, for for our presence at Cuba uh, at KubeCon. Cube Cube. Okay. I'm interested. Let's talk. Okay. Right on. Um, and we'll I think we'll leave it at that. Thank you, bye everyone, for attending. See you next week, and have a lovely day. Thank you. Bye. -bye. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye.